We are continuing our discussion, our last panel for today. We are in the forum Anti-Fragility of Ukraine Lessons of 2022. It is conducted by the Central of Economic Strategy with the support of International Renaissance Fund and uh, Sweden Embassy in Ukraine. Uh, economic Commission um, Pravda is helping us in the media sphere. And on the last panel, we are going to talk about transport infrastructure during the war, new ways for for export um, to with us today on this uh, uh, with our colleague uh, Irena Kosa had a general presentation who's the expert in the in Institute of um, Research and Politic Consultations. She's in line with us as well as the deputy head of the Ministry of Infrastructure of Ukraine, Mustafa Yem. Uh, together with me here, uh, we have Volodymyr Balin, the vice president of the Association of international uh, auto trans um, uh, auto deliveries and Valery Tkachov, the deputy head of the Department of Commercial Work of Ukrzeliznaitsa. Irena, we we'll start with your presentation based on the fact of what is right now happening in the transport infrastructure and uh, what uh, how it can provide for needs of economy. Thank you, Hlip. Uh, welcome, everybody. Valery, Volodymyr. I will share my presentation right now. Do you see it? Yes. So, the amount of logistics, transport logistics during the war, four issues I would like to cover in this presentation. First of all, why logistics is important for economy of Ukraine, what are the risks of the resilience, the resilience of logistics, what are the factors, and what recommendations, what can be done. So we'll start from the fact why this the sector of logistics, sector of transport is important for Ukraine. Uh, first of all, because transport system uh, can guarantee um, this cohesion or relate, relation between the different uh, regions of Ukraine. Ukrainian economy relies on this relation because uh, we enterprises get raw material from the outside of the regions and then also supply on the outside of their regions and they produce majority of the products for experts for consumers in different countries. That's why there should not be even a question why logistics is important for the economy. During the war, we have a transport system is also important for evacuation of uh, of citizens for transporting people inside the country and outside of it. We saw those massive uh, waves of evacuation from east to west. In the different direction, we have uh, volunteers uh, driving because they want to see uh, the Western leaders, because they want to see leaders of our country. That is, that is called uh, iron diplomacy. We have all seen those pictures of leaders of Western countries uh, with the stewardess and Ukrzeliznaitsa. Uh, logistics is also important not only because of functioning of economy, but also for conducting uh, successfully uh, hostilities. Uh, also, post money for uh, salaries and pensions are delivered uh, with the transportation. And of course, humanitarian aid is also delivered by transport. What uh, have we seen from the beginning of the war? You see here the graph, how it influenced export and import. Importance of different uh, types of transport during the times of war changed. First of all, let's look at the export. The big, the most important uh, transport for export was sea transport, but at the beginning of year, it was uh, driving 80% of our export, and in May it was already 17%. Why? We all know why, because sea ports were blocked, they were not working, and it was impossible to conduct our export. Then we had grain deal signed, 
and sea transport renewed its uh, first place. And as of now, as of October, 58% of all export is delivered by the sea transport. In import, the situation is a bit different because grain deal does not help import in any way. It concerns only export and only grains. Um, and here, the most important role has been played by the railway station in January this year, 49% was transported by the railway station, but then the war happened. Sanctions were sanctions against Russia and Belarus took place, and we have to mention that lots of loads uh, were transported through railway station from those countries by transit. Uh, destroyed this import, so that's why this number also decreased. And uh, uh, actually, uh, uh, has bigger number here. Fifty-nine percent of our import is being transported by the cars. We can say that the cars are very important for export because uh, more valuable loads are being transported with this. At the bottom of the um, graph, you can see estimations by the Ministry of Infrastructure um, that and they calculated one tone of uh, um, of goods of commodities that were transported by uh, highway transport, and uh, you can see the numbers on the screen. Uh, you also, it also worth mentioning that it is not uh, uh, the price of, of delivery, but the price of those goods that are being delivered, because lots of people can confuse those uh, notions. Imports of starting from hostility depends even more from highway transport than export. Uh, in October this year, lorries brought 59% of all um, of uh, all uh, transport for the number of uh, 3,558 million of dollars of the uh, of the USA dollars. So uh, the railway station is in the second place. What are the risks for logistics when we have long-lasting uh, military resistance? It's blocking of whole directions and branches of transport. That's actually what happened during this war. The uh, threat of uh, air attacks also stopped all air transport and military uh, ships uh, blocked uh, seaports. Occupation of uh, Kherson and part of the Zaporizhzhia regions uh, captivation of uh, Kachovka uh, gateway uh, also uh, uh, stopped the situation. Uh, ruining of infrastructure because of uh, oil shooting, because of hostilities. We also see that uh, Russia has destroyed 25 uh, uh, thousands of, uh, door of roads, overpasses, 19 uh, airports uh, has been um, destroyed. The damage is for 2.1 billion of USA dollars only in the airport infrastructure. You see here the numbers for destruction of uh, uh, railway tracks, uh, port infrastructure also lost uh, uh, 496 millions of the USA dollars. So the volume of destruction is uh, significant. And unfortunately, it is the risk that has already happened. And uh, those numbers, those are still not final. They will uh, be growing, unfortunately. So Ukraine has to work on resilience of our infrastructure. And uh, we have here seven factors for, that I mentioned as factors of resilience, uh, how we can provide resilience of infrastructure. It's a flexibility, first of all. Uh, Ukrainian transport system should be flexible, should be able to survive possible destruction. Ukraine should be ready to be able to repair as fast as possible uh, everything and to cover those, let's say, bottlenecks. Um, I, was always, I will just mention the railway bridge that connected Ismail, uh, but it's not the only problematic uh, place. We all we need to have uh, the plans on how to 
solve uh, problematic situations if we do have such risk. The next factor is multimodality. Ukraine has to work on multimodal transport to reload um, goods as fast as possible from one type of transport to the other or to bring it in containers, to transport it in containers. For this, we need multimodal terminals. And it is uh, not fast decision, it's more for prospects, but certain uh, measures can be already done, certain terminals that can be built fast and uh, most probably on the west and on the um, on the south of Ukraine that can play this role of such uh, transport centers. Another thing is a changing of transport network. Uh, here, what I mean by that, that um, recovery of railway infrastructure and other transport infrastructure should take into account possible change just in uh, the places of big industry enterprises. So their location, uh, some, we have some not big enterprises which relocated, but still we can expect that this division uh, of industry enterprises throughout Ukraine be changed uh, after the war and our new transport system should take it into and if before the war in Ukraine, the development was from the north to the south, so the commodities were brought to ports and then delivered, then I think after the war, during the, long, during the long time, we will have this orientation for the West, and we have to take this into account during the recovery as well. The next factor is um, stopping using not profile types of activities. Here, I mean enterprises, big enterprises, which uh, have seen that during the war it's more profitable for them to open their own logistic uh, departments on uh, in the enterprises and in the industries but after the war this need will disappear and I think that to have its own logistics will will, will stop being profitable anymore because it's constant um, costs for maintaining uh, uh, cars so we uh, there will be also more expensive transport needs the next factor is deeper in cooperation with neighboring countries. Lots of things has been done in this direction. And we have to continue cooperating with Poland, Hungary, Romania, Slovenia, Moldova uh, concerning uh, common uh, custom control, uh, unification of uh, some informational system for uh, paperless technologies, 24-7 uh, work and other issues. And in the long term prospect, Ukraine also has to develop and build uh, railway tracks with is uh, um, the whites, as uh, uh, European whites of rails. The next factor is compliance to European standards. Ukraine is a candidate to become a member in the Euro to, to, to the European Union, and it has to use the standards of the EU while building and modernizing, uh, rebuilding and modernizing infrastructure. So, for example, it has to give the access to people with special needs, and um, it has to be compliant with the environmental uh, requirements uh, built, for example, uh, um, also, for example, view the transformation to alternative sources of energy. And the last point is digitalization. It's when we move from paper to digital documents. It's, of course, difficult to talk about this right now when we have attacks on energy infrastructure and uh, issue of digitalization are seeming uh, um, not as important right now, but I think that it's future simplification of the procedures will be the result of uh, the fact that industries will try to find the way to minimize their cost expenses and our experience of distant work during pandemic uh, created need for such instruments such tools and it will continue developing. And the last part uh, that I want to talk about today, it is actually what can be done, what recommendations I have. I divided them in parts, what can be done right now and what uh, can be done in the medium term prospect. So in the nearest future, to eliminate uh, transport delays and improve uh, uh, connection for Ukraine, we have to have negotiations with new country for us to have additional uh, load capacity. We also have to increase the throughput, throughput, uh, throughput for terminals 
and uh, we have to optimize custom operations and other checks. You know, there are lots, there is lots of work uh, already in this direction, but I would like to emphasize that it has to be continued, provide additional for being uh, goods of the cost of the borders to use uh, technologies to, for paperless technologies and also eliminate um, the risks and to ensure uh, transportations in the middle term prospects we have uh, talking I'm talking about the fact that we have to work on an alternate alternative ways uh, with the transport, uh, if it stops, and the uh, special attention has to be paid uh, to that. We have to electrify new, uh, the, the main, sorry, uh, railway corridors, but once again, uh, based on the recent attacks, this direction is uh, kind of questionable right now, but electrification is the possibility to use uh, faster movement, especially on the railway. So once again, this recommendation stays here about the electrification of railway connection. We have to build multimodal terminals on the west and south country, as I have mentioned, for um, easy, trans, uh, easy charge of transport, renew capacities of seaports. We'll have to focus on demining, on deepening, on clean modernization of them after we overcome Russia and uh, seaports will be open. We will have lots of work there. We have to uh, increase capacity of seaports of Ukraine and generally the uh, capacity of transport system towards so European countries, we have to create um, fair competitiveness on the uh, on the market of transportation. So what we have been talking about even before the war by the experts have been talking about that to build uh, railway tracks with European vats of rails and standards of the EU. I have already mentioned that. Thank you for attention. That's all from my side. I will happily join the discussion. Thank you, Irina. Now I would like to, to ask Mustafa also online. Mustafa, are you here with us? Hello. Yes, Mustafa is here. Hi. The last time on our event, we saw each other when transport was on more or less the same status as uh, energy is currently, uh, currently is, and it was very critical part when uh, fuel cannot be driven from one side, grains cannot be transported to another side. Now, it's n now you are working on resilience, on uh, for future, to be ready for future challenges and to those that we are currently having, to be ready for them, to be, to prepare for risks, uh, if to talk about grain in deliveries because this corridor is kind of, it kind of is kind of there, but uh, these if it is not guaranteed. So what are the main tasks now for you to make infrastructure, logistics for external trade and for internal trade in Ukraine as resilient as possible? What is your agenda currently? Hello. So first of all, thank you for your invitation. Sorry, I can't join you physically. Uh, we are working from our working places right now. So unfortunately, I couldn't join you. But if uh, I can be actually very short here, very in a nutshell, I can invite Irina to our team because she already has mentioned all the data. Uh, the only thing that I would like to add to what Irina has mentioned uh, concerning uh, volumes of export import, we have new data that we got today uh, and accumulated and analyzed concerning export and import, they are a little bit different from what we saw in October. They are, frankly speaking, significantly different because we had, we had 
problems with our grain initiative from what we are currently seeing. First of all, last month, uh, 4.9, not actually last month, this month, 4.9 million of grain left the country. For you to understand that, so I, just, I will just show you the presentation if you don't mind. Yes, can I do this? Can the system, does the system love this? Yes. So that's, you see the data, right? No, no, we see them. Okay, so these are the data that we got uh, today, as, as of today, yes, these are current data. The problem is that grain, if to, to look at this slide, the right circle, the right diagram, it's 4.9 million of tons left the country by sea transport. Previous month it was 535. The decrease happened because of the disruption of grain initiative. Nevertheless, it is the biggest in capacity um, and volumes type of transport. The second difference that you can see because um, a number in sea transport uh, decreased, we see increase in railway. Concerning money numbers, you see that we still have full leadership uh, by of sea transport. The second place, 37% as it was last month, is uh, uh, highway transport and uh, railway transportation. It's 19%, uh, so the ratio is more or less the same. The same is about the price, average price for exporting for, for that product that leaves the country by highway transportation. It's um, four times as high as railway, and that's because of the fact that uh, highway transportation it's used for delivering uh, ready, ready, ready products. And if to look at the import, then the situation, as you can see, is uh, also have not drastically changed. If you look at the previous month, we had 59% uh, of the product that come by highway transportation. 77, it was then 75, it is now, if to talk about and all other types of transport you can see also on the screen. That's what I can add. If to get back to what uh, already has been mentioned, what plans do we have and what can we plan for future? Uh, so first of all, let's start from big things. Um, our biggest uh, dream, aim for our uh, team is the control with Polish side, common control, common border and custom control. Frankly speaking, I really believe in that, even though uh, last year when we were talking that we can have transport liberalization, they told that it's impossible, uh, the Polish will never agree to that, it will never happen. I can tell in this uh, circle, very, let's say, close circle, that it happened. We were ready, actually, if you remember, last year we started in November, we worked communicative. We worked on communicative plan. We uh, connected with all European Union countries that could influence the situation. We worked the whole the whole story. We had this uh, small negotiation with the Republic, small aggress, small argument with the uh, Republic in Poland, and we had appeal to European Commission to somehow influence the situation. But what was important, we were very ready to this agreement. We knew what do we have to implement where and when the full-fledged invasion and aggression uh, happened on the 24th of February, at a certain moment, uh, we, uh, we we didn't even think that it will happen, it would happen right now, but frankly speaking, in my email, private email, sorry if it's uh, some violation, disruption of procedures, I uh, sent a letter to the head of DJ Move, who answered in, it seems to me, one or two hours hours that it's a really great idea. I remember talking about that. Let's start. I told, yes, let's do this. And, um, 
We started uh, in a week. Actually, we had first round of negotiations. After then, in two weeks, we agreed on everything, and then there were some just formal issues, and it took place. It happened. So we were ready for that. The situation uh, provoked us for this, and we have had already communication with that part for this to happen at some at certain moment. Uh, I really believe that we will be able to gain common. Con um, joint control, custom and border control. Um, frankly speaking, uh, such uh, negotiations are taking place for 10 years, have been taking place for 10 years. I don't know how it happened, but for these 10 years, um, our sites couldn't agree on common text. There was no common text we could work on. And as far as I remember, all delegations that were created, once or twice they met each other, and that was the end of it. We were in Poland in Warsaw two weeks ago. Two days we had negotiations every day for nine hours. We were and negotiating. We had white uh, delegation from our side and from Polish side. We agreed on the common text. So what do I mean by that, at least we understand that there are no obstacles from the customs border uh, service, the members of delegation, there are no obstacles. And uh, the main issue was actually custom, uh, and, uh, and not custom, but border control. Um, and uh, what regulative moments we have, because Poland is in the zone, uh, the Schengen zone, and it also um, brings some limitations, but we have uh, custom control and border control, and we understand that where we can uh, go where we can actually let a little bit and where they can do this. So now it's uh, undergoing um, uh, undergoing the agreement from Poland. After that, we will be we will try to understand what to do with that because Poland is the part of the European Union. It can continue for a very long time because we have very sensitive moments which are currently looking very different for us, difficult for us to implement, but I think we will be able to do this. We will be able to agree on that question and it will be definitely be a breakthrough because otherwise we have to wait for such procedures only after we enter the European Union. I think right now we have rights and possibilities and we have such obstacles that we can ask for that. It is actually the biggest part from what we are talking about right now. That's our idea. Uh, second big thing is that is the continuation of um, the agreement of transport liberalization. I'm even more optimistic here now. And the question is for which uh, term we have started those consultations. They were pretty successful. Now we are waiting for the mandate of European Commission. They have to discuss with the um, uh, um, countries' members, and I think we will have no questions. We will continue, and we see that that hyper permissions for licenses, uh, uh, documents. We do not have this hype anymore because the majority of transporters, and we are very, high, very grateful to them for that, I uh, believe that we will be able to prolong this. I'm also very grateful to those transporters two months ago were kind of disappointed, frustrated. They thought that it would never be prolonged, but I think we will do this. So that uh, these are those two things which are at uh, international direction. In the internal direction, uh, so concerning also common control, I can say that the same delegation we now have from Romanian, Hungarian and Slovak parts, I would would really like to have the same delegation because we more or less understand the uh, negotiations and we found out a lot for ourselves. Uh, that, um, and the second thing is that this delegation already had dates from its cities, so I think we'll continue working. Um, so that's concerning uh, outside. Uh, con uh, concerning important big inside project, first main task is 
is uh, not to get any kind of load that goes to the front be stopped. Um, it is the top priority not to get this uh, ra not this train stopped, not to gain some kind of highway stopped, some kind of roads that uh, bring uh, the um, the goods to external border of Ukraine. So I think it will stay our priority. That's about roads, about railway. And of course, in this direction, we will not be stopping and we will direct the biggest amount of efforts here. To talk about uh, other things, then the biggest problem, of course, is continuing our grain deal. You know that it has been prolonged till March, if I'm not mistaken, for four months. Mm, we would like to prolong it more. Of course, we have been talking about that. And uh, we have want to prolong it for different ports, for different type of products. I'm not going to clarify here because I think that you have read about that and know about such ideas. And of course, we would like to have that. And um, and I know the team that is working on that are also optimistically oriented and how optimistic would about that. But of course, everything uh, depends on our partners and uh, concerning other things in my direction, from what I am dealing with. I think we have very sensitive and initiative, and I hope that we will be able to actually implement this. It's uh, accountability of the Ministry of Infrastructure to organize infrastructure part of the borders. It is a very important story. I hope that we'll be able to do this because we already see how we can do this. We can visions, we can strategies for this regulation. We are waiting um, for this uh, joint decision that's concerning uh, border infrastructure in different different directions. We develop service zones. It's important for us. I understand that the service zones in the future will be those enclaves that uh, actually will go to the European Union. And we will have a different uh, uh, different appeals, like connected European facilities. These are, first of all, Ushgorod, the Shaheni, Krakivets, roads, it's increasing of possibilities and status on the Romanian border. I really hope that we will be able to do that in a better way, that we will be able to uh, to help to, to work with Lozhanka, Porubne and uh, Zuzhelyashki. It's in the direction of Portugalas, Romanian Portugalas, and to have there the common point with Romanians and Moldavians, which will be, of course, cool, but it's a small dream of Donetsk cluster. So that's what we are currently having in our plans. That what I remember right now. Another very important thing: uh, it's uh, digitalization, automatization of the processes. This uh, electronic um, electronic line, uh, we want to start using it already from the next year to see how it works, and then to make it uh, wider than there is. The, the, the Draft law, draft law concerning reglement of 1770. That's about uh, digitalization of all types of transportation and creation of the register of uh, um, transporters and. Um, having certain parameters of uh, integrity for transporters, which uh, will automatically help uh, taking away licenses for some period of time until it is uh, shown in paying taxes or it is covered by paying taxes. We are showing that all transports are in compliance with legislation. I really hope that we will be able to do this should work till the end of the year and it will definitely be a step closer to those uh, illegal uh, transportation of risky and dangerous uh, loads. I think that's all from my side. Thank you, Mustafa. I think you have the possibility to stay with us till the end of our discussion. It is short. It will take 20 
uh, minutes or so. Uh, we have two representatives uh, from the segment that have been shown on the graphs, actually, of the transport uh, sector and economy, uh, railway and uh, highway uh, transport. I will start for railway just because you're closer, Valeri. To look at the communications of Ukrzeleznica, it seems like Ukrzeleznica is transporting only um, passengers and nothing else. It's understandable why it is like this, because it is the most important for people, especially in the conditions of war, when mobility is of the um, utmost importance. But what is happening with uh, commodities, with loads? Mustafa talked a little bit about problems of um, getting um, from the border of trans of transpassing the border we talked about it there and the second question was about grain deal we see that right now we see only this grain deal and that in uh, other sector of economy which has to bring something big and uh, something that cannot be brought by uh, automobile transport that they, they can somehow mm, transport their products so what did the ukrzeleznica do during this time to increase resilience of economy and uh, suggest infrastructure possibilities and one more issue one more thing maybe what interesting to say we have energy section before you energy part and energy hits when energy also of course hit railway not maybe as hard as in those sectors which are of compl on complete dependence on energy electric energy but maybe something uh, important is taking place there as well hello so i would suggest analyzing from the storm that transport system that we we are currently having and uh, was before the military aggression first of all i would like to immediately immediately would like to say that we have really raw material economy and transport system so transport system was connected and the role the main role was played by the railway station so almost 65 percent was brought by the railway transport before the war we covered um lots of capacities and in 2008 it was 500 million tons of uh, um of baggages. So we see a raw uh, export oriented economy where the biggest role was played by the railway. And those uh, uh, those loads, they were going to the sites of uh, seaports. Uh, lots of capacities that were used there from the, the, the export. In the export uh, we had mostly grain it's uh, metals and different uh, other expert oriented uh, loads from the beginning of military aggression we lost the possibility to export 120 140 million of um, goods from ukrainian producers they went to western um, parts so i would like to say that that uh, volume 120 140 million is uh, cannot be covered by transport system of Europe, first of all. Uh, why? On the example of the uh, grain, I will tell you how the situation is currently looking. First of all, we, for example, need to export for 50 60 million of grains per year as of today all seaports of poland can take 8.3 million ton per year of grain uh current station 25 so the uh closest ports logistic ports can uh transport only 33 million tons of grain that is european grain and our 50 60 million unfortunately we see See the deficit of um, capacities. Uh, 
in the closest ports. The second reason is uh, that uh, railway station, European railway station is also not capable to transport 120, 140 millions of tons, let's say even 90, 90 millions of tons per year. Railway station was uh, transporting to the ports. So if to look uh, from the strategically point of view, we see that to change uh, full changed sea export of Ukrainian uh, transportation is uh, absolutely impossible because European seaports are not uh, able to do that. They are not uh, capable enough and railway station of neighboring countries is also not uh, powerful. So Ukrainian can bring to the border two or three times more goods than we uh, are now transporting, but there is, uh, but European side cannot take them. So uh, I will repeat myself, there are no SIP capacities and uh, this uh, throughput, uh, throughput is limited by the lack of the uh, tracks, by the locomotives of the Europeans and the most important thing is limited throughput of the network of Europe. So. Really, this is a huge challenge for us, and we, with partners, uh, due to Mustafa, thanks for thanks to Mustafa, he is coordinating us with the communication with our partners. We have been working on that. From my, from our side, what we have been doing, we are widening um, the border. Um, if to talk about railway station, we have now 13 such border points. We uh, four countries on the West. Nominally, they can accept uh, daily uh, 3,400 cars um, from the rail. They, on the paper, can do this. But in fact, we can uh, give from 1,600 to 1,900 uh, cars. So um, the point, border point that we are currently having can be used to 50% capacities, and it is not the issue to the railway station. Uh, the main problem, the main strategic issue here is that the transport system of Europe is not yet ready to all those 120-140 million of export goods. If to talk about our responsibility and our measures that we, that Ukrzeznica has been implementing, it is, first of all, we are widening the amount of uh, custom points. Uh, we have a program for this, so till 2025, we are planning to um, increase their number by six units. So we will have uh, three more uh, border units, border points in Poland, one, two in Romania, and one more active in Moldova. Already is already active. The sixth one, the sixth point. So railway station is widening the amount of border points, and it is widening throughput of active border points, and we are building railway development of our state. So for those stations, railway stations, we can reload uh, uh, reload capacities of different nomenclatures. So I would like to say that if to talk about grains, if in March we started reloading through Western points, it was 340,000 tons. Then this month in November, it's already more than one billion, one million sorry tons of grains uh, transported through uh, 13 active border points. So railway station building its capacities on active uh, border points, building new ones. We are electrifying and repairing uh, border uh, points that are leading to uh, to state border. We are also having, uh, we are also taking certain measures that to make the procedures on the border far. Yeah, that was Mustafa was talking about uh, concerning uh, joint control. This is a very important uh, measure. It will uh, help us uh, simplify those bureaucratic procedures. We have been all doing this, but I would like to mention that 
we do have strategic problem that as long as we are a raw type material export oriented economy those 120 140 million of tons that were transported to the direction of seaport it is really, it will be very difficult to change them to substitute them but we do see a progress and we have to talk about export by railway station then in march all uh, loads it was around three million then it's closer to four or five millions i mean this uh, volume of uh, transportation but even as of now active uh, border points uh, are used for 50 percent and that's the question for the readiness of transport system of europe to absorb our export to accept our export loads and if to talk what measures are needed strategically measures first of all in ports of europe we have to get guaranteed quotes for ukrainian loads transporting ukrainian loads and it has to be not for whatever price as it is happening right now and the price of transportation price of uh, transportation increased two three times well, it's it is needed to agree uh, with our European partners in advance, maybe with fixation of uh, this transportation. Also with our railway colleagues, we agreed on how to organize uh, this transportation from the border of Ukraine to those supports. Uh, we have found certain technological solutions uh, that it is some kind of uh, train to some regular roads. Uh, to have those uh, quotes, to meet those quotes. And the third thing, only then we have third limited limited issue, it's our borders. And in this issue, as um, I see it, we have the biggest progress. We are building new uh, points, for example, uh, Ukrainian car, railway car can now go easier, freer. Uh, we had 350 such uh, trolleys, now we have 360 of them. So in this progress uh, of widening borders, widening amount of border points, we have been working a lot uh, due to the Ministry of Infrastructure and Ukrzeleznica, but strategical issues remain the same. If uh, to talk about um, uh, the, 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 the numbers of work of Ukrzeleznica, so you understand that every month before war we were having 20 22 27 millions in march we had 8 million so three times less but during those seven months um, the capacity the volumes increased till 20 12.4 percent so we increased for 46 percent transportation railway station already during military during this military time war times but uh, it's still not the same numbers we used to have before the beginning of the war. So when grain corridor was opened due to thankfully to a minister of infrastructure, it was really the breakthrough and export of grains only in the railway station from 900,000 increased to 3 million uh, 60,000. So uh, I think that uh, uh, we will not be able in full capacity export those loads that are being produced by our economy. If we do not have such possibility, then we will need to look uh, at all natural complex of our country and export loads which occupy um, less volume but with value added value. And that's already the second challenge for our our economy and raw uh, for how can we transform from raw economy to industrial and developed one. Thank you. Valeri uh, represented Ukrzeleznica. It's one huge monster that has been working in the segment of Ukrzeleznica. Uh, and in highway transportation, it's a very decentralized, very fragmented market. I don't know how many thousands of transporters uh, have been uh, working there. And fortunately, it's not controlled by our enemy. Um, if to talk about transportation of goods, 
to Ukrainian borders. We saw in graphs that um, volumes of exports by highway transportation increased a little bit, not of course as drastically as it is uh, in Nukarzadiznetsa case, but uh, we also see that uh, um, that import is on the first place for highway transportation. Import is a critical, this is, this is about critical goods. So what do you see on the side of highway transportation? How uh, market players react on such uh, challenges and uh, how the country is doing everything possible, the state is doing everything possible in this situation. What possibilities do you see in the future? What steps? Thank you for the invitation. I would like to emphasize on the fact that really we have we, we are having a unique situation right now. And it, this year, unfortunately, because of the war, but still we managed to uh, implement such dreams that we were have been dreaming a lot about. And we really hope that this uh, negotiation will be prolonged to so-called transport um, visa free the free transportation. If to talk about the amount of participants, we have 3,000, uh, 30,000 participants registered before the war. It was 40,000. Now it's more than 50,000 on the market of international uh, load um, transportation because uh, we uh, already the different procedures here. We were able to provide to this process for this process. We, of course, are still far from from the cities of sea uh, transport, it's much uh, cheaper, and that's uh, how it should be when five, six million only of grain was transported. I think, I hope that this initiative will continue, the ports will start working, that they will bring more uh, loads, because for us it's also critically important for the whole economy, because the cost of transportation by car, we have been talking about this, it's also cheaper than the uh, highway transport and it is all it all affects uh, final consumer and economy if to talk about our movement to Europe yes more than one year law draft law uh, was in Verkhovna Lada now in Verkhovna Rada now it's already moving it's already preparing for the second reading and it's a huge step for uh, highway transportation uh, to the direction of any European country. But if to talk about risks of export, I think they remain the same. And we have to do everything possible to have more border points throughout points for big lorries. And we are for trucks and we are thankful that Ministry of Infrastructure uh, had a work group. They are doing a lot. We are grateful for that. And we hope that today um, it will lead in the framework of big uh, recovery, rebuild all of it. We already hoped for this one year ago when this political decision was made but it has not been finalized I think that now the war will made us do the, will make us do this and a simple thing because we do not have enough time on every border we should have additional throughput uh, points for trucks uh, we have four of them in Poland Nizhenkovich we will hope that uh, we will hope that empty trucks will also be able to go there but we think that there should be one more throughput um, point or we can we, we can we want we can build one temporary because it's a matter of time yes lots a lot has been done we probably we practically do not have lines in polish borders but for example so the actually even in peaceful times it's an achievement not to have lines on the polish border well yes i don't know what to brought to this but i think it's a sorrow uh, work of Ministry of Infrastructure. We are grateful for that. And our colleagues, transporters from Poland, also uh, helped us with strikes, for example, not so traditional measures. But uh, but yes, everybody started working uh, after that. And uh, because before that, it was blocked. And we think that Polish agrarians asked to block our export there. That's what we are thinking. But um, we do not have such problem. More grains are now going to CHOP, Uzhorod, Romania, uh, Slovakia, uh, Hungary. We have also additional throughput points. 
uh, and we hope that uh, Romanians will be able to uh, take loaded trucks because right now they are accepting only empty trucks. Um, it, but it hasn't solved the question. Uh, and Ukraine, from our side, uh, also is making lots of investments. So once again, Luzhanka, entry point uh, that uh, is ready from uh, the from that side. Hungarians uh, always criticize us about that, but we need a small reconstruction for empty trucks to start moving there. But we need to, um, uh, but as far as I know with Hungarians, we already have agreement. Uh, so as soon as we finish this agreement that will be a full-fledged entry point and uh, the last uh, last week uh, last but one we had this question of Basarabia minus one ferry and Stara Kazach we actually today have talked with Moldavian Association. The problem is with Romanians. They accept in a wrong way, and that's why Moldavian custom officers uh, stop all of it. So that's why we have uh, um, lines there, and we have lots of work before us. I would like to say that we are lucky to, to have profile ministry and uh, team uh, we, yes, argue a lot on different reasons, but everything is done in a proper way, in a strategic way. The the question, the issue is not for our trucks to stay in lines. Thanks a lot. Uh, I'm very happy to hear how state and private participants of market cooperate with the ministry. Mustafa, if you don't mind the last uh, question to you and maybe from Irina, we will have some final comment as to the author of the research. Mustafa, how do you think all those uh, activities uh, on developing uh, direct connections, uh, railway connections with the European Union, is it uh, temporary? solution for the period when we have a closed sea ports or do you think that the biggest part of this infrastructure will be will support our more our trade with the european union after even after the sea is open will we be able to do this an element of resilience if for example uh we have a huge increase in prices first of all i would like I have heard this question lots of time. Why do we do this? The question is that we have now it's war, we are investing, and it will not be needed in the future. That's the first argument. And the second argument, we will enter the European Union in any case. Why do we need those entry points? And the third argument is the, the ports will be open. Why do you do this? Um, our infrastructure, our transport infrastructure was underdeveloped if to talk about European Union direction. It has always been like this. So it's not the question that we started developing that now during the war. Now, remember last year when we had lines on the same Yahudin, uh, situation on entry points. So did it become worse only with the war? No. The same with the railway station. We, is it the first time we are thinking about narrow rails, wide rails? No, we have heard about this for a very long time. For the whole country, for the huge country with huge potential, we have only two uh, the stations, um, the, the re, re loading stations. And we have been talking about this for a very long time, about intermodal stations. It will not go away, even if there is no border, even if ports are open, loads, trucks have to go. Uh, the the second graph that we were showing, if now a uh, price for one tone of load which uh, goes through a uh, border by car is three times as expensive, it will not be less when we talk about times of uh, after the war. We will win, it will not be, but it will not become less, it will still remain the same. So we 
So this price has to uh, be all uh, has to have maximum income. Logistic is just waiting near the border. One day, two days, it's 450 euros. One transporter uses for staying on the border. I'm not saying that he needs to buy additional transport. I'm not even mentioning that on the railway station, the border is also waiting for uh, trucks for the possibility to go also because our partners has been working slowly from Polish side, from Romanian side, we have questions. This is all, this all has to be developed and it's not only because of the war. The second thing, uh, we have a question that we do not have even to make up, it's Poland next to us. Poland used to uh, enter the European Union. They, it had the same problems, the same dilemma that when they were neighbors with, the, with Germany that did not let them on their markets, railway and um, uh, highway transportation. They have the same obstacles concerning permissions, permission, uh, protection of markets, uh, about, about everything. So they won only because of one reason. They were more aggressive, they were ready to work for less, they simply fight uh, price formation. So they losing programs for the transport market and now they are the biggest transporters in the European Union. But look what has happened now, before war, we were competitors with Polish uh, transporter because uh, they came to us, they took uh, goods, they had permission, they had better conditions of uh, work, they, it was easier for them to buy transport and they won from our com transporter and the transporter that was working with us had to go to Poland, register a uh, company there, pay taxes there, so it, uh, they developed mm, foreign infrastructure. Now, because of war, it may sound cynical, but it is, the, the war has become natural uh, protection of our internal market of transportations because Polish transporters do not want to go here now, they come less. So for us, it's a chance to take through internal transportations, international transportations for ourselves. So it is happening already right now. Um, if if to see on passenger uh, market, everything changed. It was 80 20 internal and uh, international transportations. In August, we have 30 70. 70 was international transportations and 30 internal ones because lots of people were going abroad. The same can happen with is, uh, loads uh, because we have lots of uh, uh, trucks that want to go maybe they will not go but they they are there mm, also you also have to understand what we are going through during six months thousands of uh, drivers came this course of international transportation it's not just to go to the point it's not just to sit and drive it's different regulation it's regime of uh, rest and work where to stop, how, what permission to obtain, what your class, what to do if you are stopped. It's expensive and in a very light regime, light mode, because Polish uh, services were treating us very well. We got those permissions. And I think, and we suggested this last year when we were in Poland and when they came to us, we have always told them, it was before the war, we told them, right now, you're pressing us a little bit. You're saying that we are doing something wrong, but imagine us that we connected our efforts, Polish market, our uh, transporters and this conglomerate because we have our sea, Black Sea, and then we have Polish ports, our uh, trucks, our rail, that plus the highway transportation. Can you imagine what we will do in the European Union? Then they did not agree on that. Now we uh, doing this on our own. We are the candidates to the members. I agree and I hope and I believe that this uh, amount of cars that we have and that experience that the railway is getting and that experience that our ports are getting will let us immediately after the war to start fighting in a very aggressive and harsh way on European for European markets of transportation. The only thing that obstructs us is internal uh, transportation in the European Union because there are regular 
violations of that. Uh, at high, uh, highway transportation cannot do this because there are limitations on the market of the European Union. But still, we can fight for that. And I think that it is possible because our drivers um, do not go after the pocket uh, portfolio, pocket of mobility. They are cheaper if to transform it in euro, and they can very fast, uh, in a fast way, uh, occupy big markets. So I don't think that it will stop under the war, and we are doing things that help us survive. And because we see, I, I, the, because what what is railway doing right now? It's a miracle. I, I will not talk about that because everybody thinks this, and uh, car market is especially is uh, seem is less obvious. State cannot regulate this, but it's not as easy. Also, they, it's also a miracle. So, uh, when next generation, or even for three, five, two, five years, we will be able to win on a transportation markets. Well, it depends where you live. And if you live near South Bridge in Kyiv, then uh, actually it's very uh, easy to see lots of uh, uh, fuel uh, cars and so on and so forth. Ira, uh, maybe you want to say, you have 30 seconds to say something and then we will finish our forum. Yes, I have for more than 30 seconds, but okay, I will uh, restrain myself a little bit. I wanted to support Mustafa that as this um, direction towards Europe, it will remain even after the war, after our victory. Uh, and as a candidate and future EU member, we will be embodied in the European markets. And I hope that those plans that are written in the National Plan of Reconstruction and Recovery uh, say that we will continue um, our industries, we will move from a raw economy. Uh, it will all stimulate development of logistics and transport infrastructure, and our connections uh, through Europe and with Europe will continue. Thank you, Ira. Uh, thanks uh, to everybody who took part in the uh, final panel of our forum. Uh, even though it had this uh, title, Anti-Fragility of Ukraine, Lessons of 2022, pretty neutral title, but after moderation of panel of this forum, I have more optimism than uh, you read, you know, news feed, and uh, every time there are some apprehensions, some risks, some fears. Here we see how Ukrainians are working in different sectors. We do not see lots of things, but there are lots of achievements there, and it makes very happy. I am very grateful to everybody who took part in this panel, in previous panels. Uh, great everybody who watched us fund Renaissance and the Sweden Embassy of Ukraine for, in Ukraine for uh, financing uh, media for support and to all colleagues from um, the CES who helped organizing all of this. Uh, I wish everybody a light and calm evening.